Joining me right now is former McDonald's USA CEO, former Famous Dave's Barbecue CEO, and Fat Brands International Chairman, Ed Renzi. Ed, it's great to have you. Thank you so much for being here. And in the last segment, we were talking about how some of the uh, leisure industries, whether it be restaurants, hotels, will see structural change. And this need to really fire up the manufacturing base is what Peter Navarro was writing about this morning. Tell me what you see as the new jobs of the future and how the restaurant business, in your view, might change. Well, you, uh, as a student of the hospitality industry and being out and about and talking to my friends who own restaurants, operate restaurants, and are involved in franchising restaurants, uh, we've seen a bunch of pent-up demand. And short-term, uh, the recovery has been pretty good in a lot of locations here in Florida. Uh, people were celebrating the fact that they could go out and have something to eat and have a drink. Uh, social distancing is the way of the day. I think that's good, but ch things are going to change. Small retailers in these malls and strip centers are in big, big trouble because th companies like Amazon have just taken their business away from them. I think hospitality is going to be fine. People need relief from all the horror they see on television, the, the, the looting and the activism uh, and the discord in government is really taking a toll psychologically. And I think getting out and about, Disney reopening, I think Governor DeSantis has done a fabulous job down here of managing the COVID-19 virus in Florida. Uh, I think we're starting to get back to some semblance of nor normal. It's going to take some time. Jobs are going to be different. You're going to see a lot different kind of employment structure when you look at the number of people, the customer ratios and things of that nature. drive throughs are going to become more important than ever before because people psychologically feel safer doing that. There's a lot of change coming. I hope it's for the better. Well, let me ask you, you just mentioned Amazon because there's a fight going on this morning, actually, between Amazon and, and Elon Musk, uh, founder of Tesla. And, and, and Elon Musk is blasting Amazon and its founder, Jeff Bezos, pretty much for not accepting a certain book, but saying that the, the book about the coronavirus pandemic, it, it's, it, it's a clash that highlights the power that some big tech companies wield over speech. Do you think Amazon should break up? Absolutely not. And I find it ironic that two billionaires are fighting over a book. I mean, it's just nonsense. Uh, the reality of it is Jeff Bezos built a company. If you want to compete with him, do what he did. Be competitive. That's what the United States is all about. It's a free enterprise system. I don't f favor at all busting up Amazon. But local retailers have got to get smarter if they're going to compete. It's pure and simple. It's a free enterprise system. We have a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's use that opportunity. Well, the, the reason is, is because uh, Musk re was responding from a tweet from Alex Berenson. He's the author, said that the Kindle Direct Publishing uh, had rejected his submission for a book. And the book was unreported truths about COVID-19 and lockdowns, questioning whether the virus is as deadly as the public health says. And uh, Musk says, well, he should not be rejecting a, a book. But that's a whole other story. Let me ask you about this, this job creation situation and what Peter Navarro writes about. How are people going to get trained for those jobs? Ed, do you think there's enough infrastructure in place to ensure that our jobs of tomorrow, uh, and we understand what they entail and we have the skill sets to get those jobs? I absolutely do. I think that uh, industry always adapts. Uh, I've been around a lot of large corporations in my life and uh, seen their training programs. Those training programs evolve every day to meet the needs of the new uh, employee. Uh, culturally, we're different every generation, and the needs and the way you train are different. Open office concepts, working from home, these things are all going to evolve and reach a peak of efficiency and then the new thing will come along. I personally have trouble with not working in an office because I like to look people in the eye, see what their leadership skills are like, understand what kind of questions they're asking, because body language is probably 80 percent of the language that takes place in a business environment. Uh, so I want to be close to people. Yeah. Younger generations of people, not so much. That's Mm -hmm. So then that may dictate how they work and what, they, what, what jobs they take on. Brian Brenberg, jump in here. Ed, it's Brian Brenberg here. If we want to get a manufacturing resurgence in the United States, this has to be the best place in the world to do manufacturing. Some people are talking about a blue wave in November. If we get that, 
Does that jeopardize our ability to be able to bring manufacturers back home? Are they going to be afraid to operate in a progressive dominated country where you're talking about policies like the Green New Deal? I think uh, just the opposite is true. I grew up in a very blue collar community, a blue collar town. In fact, I'm going back there in October to give a speech. We need welders, we need carpenters, we need cement layers, we need brick layers, we need people to work with their hands, highly skilled. And they build America. They're going to build and rebuild America over and over and over again. What we need to do is wise up and start valuing what a great contribution. The, the people that work with their hands make. Blue-collar workers are essential. You can't have work from home without somebody building computers and all the rest of the stuff that's needed to do that. I, I really look forward to a yeah, resurgence is, of blue-collar workers. Which is why Peter Navarro writes in that op-ed this morning, the most important event this past week was not the burning and looting of cities. It was Saturday's launch of the first manned U.S. space mission in almost a decade. He writes that in the op-ed as an, as an example of some of the high-tech jobs that could be available in the future and what we should be striving for in terms of firing up that manufacturing base. That manufacturing base could be anything from, you know, quantum computing and AI to uh, technology within healthcare, Ed. Absolutely. I think we need to revisit uh, health care and senior citizen uh, health care. We did a terrible job with this COVID-19 when it came to nursing homes and senior living centers and things of that nature. We don't have to function that way. It, it's almost third world in some ways. I think we can use the intelligence we have. We need to find new health care worker training programs. We need to encourage people to get into health care. And we need to stop putting such a huge burden on our medical facilities. My God, the nurses and doctors working hour after hour after hour without all the equipment they need. Let's bring all that back to the U.S. and quit outsourcing that. Why do we outsource our space program to the Russians, for God's sake? Why are we letting China build our medicine uh, 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 and develop? It's crazy. Well, that's absolutely right. 70% of the active ingredients in our prescription drugs made in China. Not a good place to be reliant upon in the middle of this pandemic. Ed, great to see you. Thank you for your insights this morning, as always.